subscribe. Yes, that's I right. I want you to. Like, I want you to. That's right. Yes. I don't even know what I was Light saying. Light diversion. Where do you want to see? <laughs> the sharks. <laughs> okay, Greg. See ya. <laughs> but this was really fun. So I am with Ed Ballou, our Chief Sustainability Officer and our Director of Field Research at literally my favorite place as a kid growing up. This is the Shedd Aquarium in downtown Chicago. I'm Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guy. This is my channel, Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guy, and it's all about living the aquascape lifestyle. And Ed, we didn't build just one. Nope. We didn't build just two. Nope. We built three <laughs> water features at literally the place that I was the number one attraction for me as a kid to come down here. And I'm sure you I too. I was the exact same. <laughs> Like-minded on this. This is literally one of the oldest aquariums in the country. Yep. And uh, this all started with a uh, back upon this waterfalls in the back, right? right. And exactly. It went more. Started off with that and it was designed to capture the runoff coming off of that back terrace right. because they're having erosion issues. All right, let's go check this out and then we're going to see the rest of them. All let's right. go. My predecessor, Bryce Banstra, was the first gardener here, and he was here nine years. He left in 1999. When he left, there were over 600 species of plants on the property, so he built all the original gardens on the property. He built the terraces, he put up with Lakeshore Drive. I don't even remember. I mean, I remember the day that it happened because I got out of my car and I was like, wow, a whole new world. It was so peaceful. Now we think we're probably up over a thousand species of plants. We're pretty much organic. We make exception for thistle, and we make exceptions in the migratory bird garden behind the building where we don't grow food because <laughs> otherwise we're sunk. We educate, we have a lot of fun. Isn't this fun? It's, it's my favorite plant. It started out that I just maintained the gardens that were here, but because it's important to be relative to your mission, I decided that the garden should express sustainability because we work at a conservation institution so we started to change how we do things what I've discovered is that people don't create communities gardens create communities we've integrated food into our plantings here because I think it's great to show people that to integrate those two things gives you a better harvest it's beautiful there's beautiful architecture and vegetables and we share our vegetables with our collection so it's all organic we're doing some studies on nutrition for the last couple of years to see how our vegetables compare to the vegetables that come from our vendor, that come from who knows where on the planet. <laughs> and this is Ed from Aquascape. We are here talking about the water features that we've done around the property. Oh, yeah. All of them are designed for rainwater capture. So we're trying to offset some of that water. We still do need to add potable water during many months of droughts, but we have underground reservoirs where we're capturing all the water that falls into those features. We recirculate that water to give us the desired water quality, but we're also trying to work with the different plant communities that they have here to bring in the pollinators, the right insects, the birds, amphibians, different animals and things that normally would be found here along the lakefront. So we're trying to create the proper communities for them. We have waterfalls, we have cascades, we have pools of water, we have shallow water, we have deep water, we have fast moving water. So we put all these different things together for the sights and the sounds so it actually creates a little bit of diversity here. So we have four acres, we have three gardeners. Count a lot on volunteers, on interns, and on corporate groups that come and you know want to give back. Where do you want to see? 
<laughs> the sharks. <laughs> okay, Greg. See ya. <laughs> So, Ed, I love the signage and love the pictures. Right. But this is what it looked like when we were done. And look at it now. It's a jungle. Well, it's in 12 years. And this is what they wanted. It's exactly because they what wanted they want. to attract wildlife. And it. so, this is a complete, literally, jungle, which makes it much more natural yeah. for the plants and animals. If, and if you look 100 feet that way, it was a bare slope of sod. It was turf grass. Yeah. Now, it's a living, breathing riparian ecosystem, which is home to the dragonflies and butterflies and pollinators and birds and yep. all types and that's, of fun stuff like that. that's how it's supposed to that's be. That's what it's all about. And check this out. <laughs> Literally, this is the best view of the city of Chicago from the patio at the Shedd Aquarium. We actually have hosted pandemonium here and we've had hundreds of contractors out here with this is our backdrop and the view. So beautiful day in the city. It could show that you can put an aquascape water feature in anywhere if you can put this in downtown. And Ed, when you were building these things, you were digging up everything. Oh and, my gosh. <laughs> anything and everything <laughs> that has ever been used in the city of Chicago. Actually, the stuff in the front, we yeah. are finding stuff from the Chicago Fire of 1871. That... <laughs> All right, so <laughs> this so was cool. the first one. Check out the others. So awesome about this ad is this is right where everybody comes in. I mean, look at all these school kids here <laughs> down here to enjoy this. And they've got, if you were to say this was in the middle of uh, the forest, everybody would believe you. I agree. That so, was the whole design thought process. This was a build a pond day. It was 2009 or 10. Okay. Now, this is one of the things that makes it so cool to work with an organization like the shed yeah right i know this is fantastic it's not only beautiful but you do know that you know the history of this stuff is fascinating all of this stuff was found washed up on a beach yep. every piece and artists over on the west coast came in and they did tons of these things all around the shed but all of this trash just to raise awareness about yes. what's happening it's, it's actually pretty cool yeah a little handle for a screwdriver and it's unbelievable plastic tons of stuff And right here in the front is the piece de resistance. <laughs> People know Chicago for the Buckingham Fountain. This has been here right now for how long? 10 years. 10 years, <laughs> but all day long, we've been watching people come here and get photographs. But look at this, spectacular <laughs> with the backdrop of the city. This is my kind of waterfall. As the owner of the company, it's fun for me to be able to come back and see a place that literally was my top place in Chicago to visit when I was a kid, and to see what this guy was able to design and create. Not one, not two, but three water features. 
Ed, this is great stuff. Appreciate it. I'd love you to share with our viewers more of the construction process of this. And if you want to learn more and see what Ed does, visit the Team Aquascape page because that's the construction side of living the Aquascape lifestyle, the behind the scenes type of stuff. But in the meantime, Greg Whitsock, living the Aquascape lifestyle. Like, comment, subscribe, and follow along as we go to cool places with a lot of kids and a lot of noise. <laughs> I love yes. my job. <laughs>